Hello! Are you interested in learning how to build a website with backend and database from scratch, deploy it to a web server and then go live on the internet? If so, you came to the right place. Welcome! My name is Andreas Jatt, your tech curious web designer. I am passionate about the front end, the back end, and all that jazz. So, in this video, I will give you a quick introduction and overview of what we're going to build and what technologies we will be using. This is part of a whole video series where I will guide you through the process of building a web app from start to finish. Whether you are a beginner and you're curious about web development, or you are a web designer and you want to know about the backend and the database, or you're an entrepreneur and you want to bring your idea to life by building a prototype or MVP by yourself before hiring a dedicated developer. Whatever your background, this is going to be super beginner friendly. Maybe some knowledge of HTML and CSS would be great, but definitely not required. The web app we're going to build is basically an Instagram clone where you can post images, but with some additional features like a web scraper. Let's have a look. The homepage will consist of a stream of posts created by the users containing an image, body text and category text. We will be building our own web scraper to get images from Flickr and then we can add our own personal caption to it. We can add tags to our posts from a set of predefined categories which can be used as filters for searching through the posts. We can comment on posts and also reply to comments. Of course, we can also like posts, comments and replies without the page refreshing itself. We will achieve this without writing any custom JavaScript code. The sidebar displays a list of the most popular posts and comments, providing an interesting insight into what's trending on the site. In the profile section, we can add our profile image and bio, we can see our most recent posts, top posts, top comments and also the posts we liked. Overall, this is quite a complex web app, but it has all the functionality you would expect from a modern social site. To check out our live version of this website, go to awesomepix.com. This is a fully working web app and feel free to create a post or a comment. To build this web app, we will be using three great modern technologies, Python, Django and HTMX. Let me give you a quick introduction. Python is one of the most popular programming languages out there, used in web development, artificial intelligence, scientific computing and many more. It is a general purpose language, easy to learn and to read. Just overall a good language to know with a large and active community. Django is the most popular Python web framework and it has batteries included, so to speak, meaning many things are already built in, such as user authentication and the database interface. And HTMX is a JavaScript library to interact with the backend with the functionality of AJAX but without the need of writing any custom JavaScript code at all. Magic. Now you might be asking, but Andreas, why did you choose these technologies when there are literally hundreds to choose from? That's a very good question indeed. Allow me to tell you my criteria. So first, I don't want to build everything from scratch and reinvent the wheel. So I'm looking for a framework with batteries included. But it should still feel light, not cluttered with things I don't need and easy to use. Secondly, it must offer a high degree of flexibility as I intend to develop my own custom website. And additionally, it should also be highly scalable to handle increased traffic should that arise. It has to be easy to learn and to use as a beginner. And I want to choose a language and framework with an active community behind to have many resources available. When considering frameworks for my project, I looked into several options. Django immediately stood out as one of the most popular frameworks with a battery included approach. 
It has a large and active community behind and is written in Python, which is considered one of the most readable programming languages out there. Many popular websites, such as Instagram and Spotify, are built using Python and Django. I just wanted to mention Flask as an alternative framework for Python. It is a lightweight framework, however it doesn't have the batteries included approach. Another framework I considered was Ruby on Rails, which is often referred as the godfather of battery included frameworks. Rails is written in Ruby, a much lesser known programming language, but one that is used by successful companies like Airbnb and Basecamp. Laravel is a newer framework built in PHP, which is a popular language for web development. However, some developers do not consider PHP to be a great or high-level programming language. Despite this, Facebook and Tumblr are built using PHP. I considered also WordPress. However, it is much less flexible and customizable, and it comes with a whole CMS system built in. I wanted to keep my web app as slick as possible. Spring is a framework for Java, a very popular language for building desktop and Android applications. Java is heavily used by enterprise services like Amazon and Twitter and the learning curve is a bit steeper. Lastly, there is JavaScript, a programming language that can be used in the front-end and the back-end. It has several frameworks, the most popular being Express.js and Nest.js. These frameworks are used in combination with Node.js, which is the runtime environment for JavaScript in the backend. Although this is a very popular stack among developers and used on sites like Netflix and LinkedIn, I personally wanted to avoid using JavaScript because I was never a big fan of the JavaScript syntax. And I found working with all the different libraries and packages associated with it to be less compelling than other options. Ultimately, Django was the clear winner for me since it met all my criteria. Also looking at the charts for the most popular programming languages like this one has affirmed my opinion that Python is a great choice. I hope this has given you an insight of the various technologies available and their applications. Now let's take a closer look at what a framework actually is and how Django works. So basically a framework handles all the logic between the browser or the client as it is also called and the database. Luckily in Django there's a lot of logic already built in. The core elements in Django are firstly the model which represents the database in Django. We don't have to write any SQL code ourselves, that is the language to interact with the database. Our model does it for us. This is called Object Relational Mapping, ORM in short. This is very powerful and makes it easy to work with databases. Next we have the view, or the controller. Basically this is the brain of Django. Here we write all our custom logic, what to do when we get a request from the browser and what information we need to send back. Then we also have the template, which is the visual representation of the website. It can include variables with data from the database and it can also perform some basic functionality such as if statements and loops. This system or design pattern is called MVT, which stands for Model View Template. So let's see how this all works together now. Let's say we type a URL in the browser. The browser sends a request to the backend. First it will go through the URL routing, which basically checks which function is mapped to which URL. The function is then called in the controller. From there we might need some data from the database. The model transforms our Python commands into SQL commands to interact with the database and retrieve the required data. We also need a template which itself is linked up with a CSS style sheet, static images and JavaScript files. Once we gathered all the different pieces, Django does its magic and put them together to send it back to the browser and we see the requested web page. So that's the Django framework in a nutshell. Now let's have a quick look at the site's architecture and what pages and functionalities we are going to build. 
We start with the index page, which displays a list of many posts in an endless stream. We will build a paginator for this so we don't load all the posts in at once, but in smaller chunks. Then we have the individual post page with their associated comments and replies. We have a create post view, an edit view and also a delete view. These are the four basic operations called CRUD, which stands for create, read, which is basically displaying the post itself, update or edit and delete. We have the same CRUD operation for the profile as well. Here we create, edit and delete a user profile. Then we have also a standalone 404 page, which is shown when the user tries to access a page which doesn't exist. And finally, for comments and replies, we have a create and a delete view. It's important to have a clear plan and overview of how the website is organized and structured in place before starting programming to help create a trackable roadmap for the website's development process. All right, enough introduction. Let's get down now to the meat and potatoes and let's start coding. Just one thing before we dive in. If you like this content, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ajadmeister. If you want to support me also financially, I will be super grateful. I am a stay-at-home dad of two little cute buggers and every little helps. I set up a Patreon page at this link where you can become my patron or you can also buy me a coffee at this link if you like. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. And now without further ado let's get started. I see you in the next video.